I'm really happy with every single one. Everything's bang on. Everything. It's all down to the carp gods around the full moon. Hey, look, look, you can see that one, look. Look, it's two, look, see it? So that, that there, laying a choddy down on that silkweed, right? I'm so close. The closest I've ever been to her. These are just things I go through, you know, I take it, I take it for granted myself, but I just check everything. Nothing can go wrong. Just had a couple. Got the rod back out, another one went off. Got one that looks about 30 pounds. And about 24, 25 cons. My beef of beach is now rocking. One thing I've noticed about fishing my beef for beach is um, the bulk of the shows are like from first light, first two hours to the point of the next 24 hours to the next period in the morning, um, they don't really show. The only other thing is as well, over the few trips I've fished, casting at them doesn't seem to do it either. You're better off just to sit it out, wait, let them finish, move round, and then set your traps mid-afternoon. I'm in the main pub swim, and this is where we filmed last time. Um, what I like to stand here is it's just, you can see so much of the water, and I don't want to miss anything. And you're sort of planning your next move, if you need to move and uh, it's already ticking in my head. Um, I've got to move at some point, unless things change. I've seen, what's it, four shows, is it? Um, two over there. But, oh, there's just no point going right now. I'd rather just watch to see where they end up. Out. Was that a tench? It's subtle, weren't it? We just had a, a subtle show where we missed it. And when you're unsure if it's a tench or a carp, as a rule of thumb, a tench blows out what I mean bubbles within seconds, and a carp is normally a lot longer and we just had a like a subtle show there and if you'd have seen it you would have gone tench but it was like 15 20 seconds for it bubbled up and it went down deep 100 percent carp tench bream just do not do that Let's talk about there, Elliot. What do you want to know? What's happened? I pissed in my waders yesterday. Yeah, and what are you doing? Wearing them. And what else are you doing? Moaning that they smell of piss. And getting near me. Yeah. Yeah, so I smell it. <laughs> That's what a sick fuck he is. <clears throat> right, what do you want to do? What do you want to talk about? I'm not telling you. Oh, I'm going for breakfast now. Oh, salmon. Salmon and scrambled egg. Well, I didn't hear you. Well, you're fucking deaf, anyway. <laughs> right. 
I think we've all been through this scenario of how terrible this spring's been. Um, I think we seem to have our winters in the spring and our springs in the winter, really. It's all arse about tip. Can I say that, Elliot? Yeah. Thank you. Right, so anyway, I started off the sort of spring quite well uh, over the wall pack um, and then I just decided I wanted to come back to Ibiza Beach in Lincolnshire just to see what's, what's changed, what's happened. Have they hit the salted areas? I decided not to fish where, we, where we're doing the talk now, um, over the other side. So a big walk round, got two out, two out of bounds either side. So you've got to go along a road through a forest and then come back in. Um, I just thought with the way the sun comes up that way, shining onto that area, and there was a big plateau in front of the swim, this would give me maybe a chance I put myself before I knew where they would be, where the fish exactly were. Anyway, it was freezing. I mean, I'm not going to talk about the three sessions, uh, just bring it all together. First morning, bang, 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 they're showing all over me. And I mean all over me, four rods. One just shoe there. I was just fishing singles on hinges. Nothing happened, apart from maybe a couple of liners from pike. Anyway, I put a little bit of boilie in, come back again the following week, and the same thing happened. No one here, same swim, fish all over me, nothing. So I thought, right, it's gene clear. They're obviously moving around early. I'm going to put a couple of three kilo of boilie in this time, not just a little bit. Anyway, next trip, and um, the weather really went, well, savagely cold to the point of minus whatever, snow. I actually filmed some of that myself. The world has messed up. 12th of April. I'm getting up to this. But in the morning they were showing. Um, but nothing. Just nothing. It was just that early, that early wake up and it was, they were cleaning themselves, happy with life I suppose, being laid up, wondering probably as well what's going on. The same as what us humans are. The lake's thawing out after the big snow and freeze. House martins have just landed and feeding. There's one. So there is life out there. Come on, let's have another one. There's one. I think. There's one. I bet they wonder what the hell is going on. Look at them. Anyway, the second morning, there was less. You know, there's only 17 carp present in the lake. And when you're seeing sort of like between 8 and 12 a morning, yes, okay, some have shown several times, or a couple. Um, but it told me there was a group of fish out there. Anyway, the third morning, um, nothing. Um, apart from in the half light, in front of the swim where we're talking now, I see a movement. Anyway, I kept focused on that area, but there was an angler in here. Um, and then 
they started bouncing. Now, this is a small syndicate. I can't remember if it's 12 or 15 man syndicate. Places like this, um, I don't know, the anglers seem to sort of have a bit more respect for one another. Um, unlike a lot of modern day carp fishing. Now, yes, what I'm trying to say is I could have moved. I wanted to move. They were showing he wasn't up. Um, I could have moved next door, but I'm not that sort of angler. Um, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose is my scenario. And I wouldn't want to upset that person. So out of respect, after watching these fish show in this area, I'd done the next best thing I could do. And that was vacate the area and head off to the wall pack. By the time I got to the wall pack, it had been out. Or one of them, the one, the babe, let's put her, the old one. Um, that was a bit, oh, I've been here before, like last year, last autumn, um, early autumn. Every time I planned to come here, she'd come out. She loves a hot day in the sun, like in an afternoon as a rule. And over, let's say a seven, maybe an eight week period, she'd come out three times. So I just thought, here we go again. And I threw my toys out the pram, legged it, vowing not to come back for a while. Um, get back on the wall pack. Can't beat a cam's sunrise. All part of the adventure. Listen to the birds. Feed them in a stalk area on the um, boily crumb. See the bubbles coming up? Right there. It's going really cloudy down there. They're murking it right up. Eating crumb boily just under the bobbin by the rear handle. 650 miles this week, nothing for three days. Then dropped into the wall pack on a long drive home. Got rewarded with this old Cam's Babe Inch Diff Rig over ACP Pacific Plum. Happy days 31.8. Fish mega mega tight lines on the back lid in the edge over a light scattering a 12 and 15 mil. Let's do the other side. Battle's unreal. I've only got the rods left, I was just about to reel them in. I ain't no Moyd Elliot. Happy days. Right, time to go go home. Family life. Gonna be stinking a carp now. Laters. Always care for your carp. Don't go carp fishing without carp care treatments. While I was over the wall pack, um, I had a recapture and I caught the Lake Seven Big one again. There you go. Summer special. To be fair, it had only been recast about an hour. <laughs> 